We got springs, we got tools. This is the rear end of all right, Super Tool. So back in 93, I laid this all out on paper and uh, trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. I've uh, disconnected the anti sway bar, so we got some travel. Uh, we took out the coil springs and out the shocks because this is just kind of what we had left. So that's all gone. Designed to ride with about 12 inches of travel. So we're at about 6 inches right here. Run her all the way up. See, I can actually, I'm actually getting a uh, potential of 14, 13, 14 inches out. I want you to come around this, this end because I want you to see, or actually, can, can you get on an angle where you see the slope of this shock? So we're going to run down to right height, and right now the angle on the shock looks pretty good. You're, uh, you're going down, shock's going down, it's working, okay? Now, of course, we were overloaded in Alaska. Well, we had so way too six much. six inches right height, we were down to about four. Yeah. Right. No wonder my kidneys still hurt. All right, we're almost there. So here's about where we were sitting. Real close to where we were sitting in Alaska here. Still we're going up, down, Carl. Yeah, I know. We're about five inches. Now look, we got three inches of shock left, right? Yeah, I am. Now we're going to go all the way to the bottom. Okay. What you'll see in that last four or five inches of travel is the shocks rotating around their mounts. They're not doing anything. So you got five inches of travel and an inch and a half of shock around the back, and you can watch it as I go back up again. Right. But basically, you see, you want to shoot these two shocks here, and they're yeah. rotating. So with, 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 with the load on it, right where we needed shocks the most. We didn't have any. We didn't have any. They're, they're just they're rotating in a circle right here. Right. I'm getting a little bit. It's a little bit of shock motion, but you're getting half the shock from you're, the travel. You're at the end of your tangents, where right. you want it the other way around. Right. So, and, and this was designed so I didn't have shocks coming through and I could take grandkids and, and not have mud coming in on the inside of the Jeep. You know, I consider and I designed it in 93, but the hell, I think it worked all right. Now, what our next considerations are articulation. 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 Say it. Say it like you mean it. Whoa. I'm getting seasick. Uh, uh, uh. Get Everybody thought I didn't it, put one look at the deep go, how can that articulate? Well, I assure you. It does. It does. All right, you're off the ground. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, it, it, it cranks just fine. Pretty much tires and body are, are, are the limitation of that. Now, my next problem is I gotta get a shock in here and I gotta mount it here. Which means this mount, when it comes up, is gonna lean into the tire. So I gotta actually put my bigger tires on. I wanna get that shock so it's vertical at full compression. So these are, these are almost horizontal at full compression. Yep. I want to design it so it's vertical at full compression and then leans out of the way when it goes up. So as, as we compress, we get more and more shock. Are you going to upgrade your bump stops? Please. Well, I, have no, I have no bump stops. Hey, dude. It's these freaking bearings. Yeah, well, yeah. there was a rubber snubber on there. Kinda. But well, actually, one of these, when I took it off, that one snapped, which means one more bump, we might have lost our whole spring. For something that was designed in 93, it, it served its purpose pretty damn good. Yep. Now we gotta step step it up. Oh, here's the other thing I noticed. Look at this. Even I, I'm not even full travel. Look at the bind up here. The bind? Right there. Oh, on the on the mount. On the actual mount. Yeah, but, so yeah, but you scab that in up north. No, no, these, these two tabs here were always there. We're, we're always there. We added this because we were rotating the whole cross member. Yeah. But what I'm, what I'm saying is everybody who builds a suspension needs to run it 
and there's compromise. You may you may have to limit some articulation so shit doesn't break itself apart. Right. Oh, here's the other thing I thought was interesting on full group. Yeah. Let me get it there. Be the patient, folks. Rotate around the post one more time rather than actually do anything. All right. So. Does make a really nice compact see, package. See, I'm, I'm still missing about an inch there, a clearance. Yeah. Okay, so come up front and I'll show you what I'm buying on. It's kissing the oh. cross member here and here. And right there. Both sides right there. So this actually And how the hell did we never hear that or see that? Well, because when it comes down to the end of it. It just kiss, kisses Whoa. a little bit right there. Yeah. And you can get it all the way if you work hard enough at it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not <laughs> suspension travel. And, and you'll see rust marks <laughs> and wear marks on those points. Oh, yeah. Very heavily. Well, Well. time to learn. Next thing is, is a good shock right about here that does its, does, its, does its snuff. Comes up through all the crap. I think of all your bars and whatnot, get the shocks in right. And well, then I'm going to leave this all together and, and figure my shock placement. Yeah, this is now your prototype. Right. We got The, the brake's got to move up here, clearly. Yep. we got to get the shock mount, but it's got to set up. So when I, I got to put the 44s on so that when I articulate, I'm not eating the shock mount. Because if you saw that before, when this thing tipped over, you know, if I got a shock mount here, when it articulates, that thing's going to be... It's going to be close, folks. In the tires. Well, yeah. If you're going to move... Uh, if you're going to do extreme articulation... You're, there's a couple things that you're going to feed to the wolves. This is not going to be a street car. You're gonna sure it is. <laughs> Let's put a bigger anti sway bar on it. Never, the, 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 never big enough sway bar, right, Carl? Right. Never. Well, here's the other thing I discovered on that sway bar. If, if you look at these links when it comes up, I go up pretty quick. What do you What do you want? We're gonna not, well, pretend we've got a sway bar here. We're going to go up. Yep. I'm gonna get the sway bar where it wants to be. Uh, I, can, I don't think I can. Well, yeah. I, I, I get. Well, what yeah. it does. Two seconds. I got this figured out. Does an off center thing and becomes useless for a second, doesn't it? Some of our travel is limit being limited. Here, we put it on that side. All right, now I see you can see that ain't where it goes, but now we're gonna go up. Oh, you're gonna break it. It's coming exactly. out. Exactly, exactly my point, okay? Ooh. See, this is stretched out here straight. We got a straight line, right? That ain't gonna go anywhere. Right, so. You're gonna watch it. That's gonna have some force on a it. A little bit. It's got a lot of force on it. Right, so what I'm saying is that, that was limiting our wheel travel. And that would make the big thump at the top. If that was where it was at. See, it's straight there now. Yeah. You gotta have something with longer arms. There's another three inches right there. Yep. Which is critical if you're airborne. You need it to droop all the way down. And if it can't droop all the way down, there's, you know, we're losing travel. Travel to absorb the bumps. Yeah, because that was the. How many photographers should we go through in the back of that rig? Four. Four or now, five? I, I can lengthen these links so they'll start a little higher, but then when I come all the way up, the links run into the bottom of the exhaust system. Cool. So I think I just got to make this. I got to get a longer arm here. Something way long. Mm -hmm. Well, that's enough camera time for one day. Sounds good. Well. This is going to be the end of Super Jeep. It's, it's served me well for the last 19 years. Well, at least this end, the back end, say. And a lot of people say Super Jeep. Some people say Super Heap. Um, you can say what you want. We've got 28 events, 14 first places. And, uh, 19 trophies. Well, yeah. <laughs> now, we're going to rebuild this, honey. This is my honey, your mom. I don't know which one's my honey here, but we're, we're going to pay homage to this honey over here. And a, a moment of silence. 
and uh, we're gonna be uh, going forward and uh, making it better. Man, uh, one of the goals of Super Jeep is always to uh, maintain seats for the passengers, grandkids, and uh, you saw earlier the the shocks kind of don't work at full compression. So on paper it looks like we're going to cut the back of this seat off here, set the shock in about like that. This this simulates a 14 inch coilover, two and a half shock body. And that looks pretty damn good. Unfortunately when you go to this side, with the same mounts, you'll see at full compression, the shock basically is laying on its side, which means we're going to have that same the shock's just going around in a circle, not actually compressing. Yeah. When we not enough travel. Down. Now, having having the back seat, and there's a bench seat for the grandkids. This was uh, the cameraman's seat. <laughs> the producer's but, but seat. But this is mounted right where it would be. And it looks like we can tuck that right underneath there and build a mount in here so it hangs out no less than, say, a front steering knuckle would. So it doesn't it doesn't uh, reduce our ground clearance by much. It's, I mean, maybe three four inches, but it, it doesn't hang below the rotor, and that, the bottom of the front steering knuckles are even with the bottom of the rotor. So maybe I'll have to build a little guard around it, and then I'll have a shock tower in here, and the other side works out just as good. Drop that over here. And I may I may have to put a little notch right here with the shock for the frame. Right. But just inboard there. And then we'll have a little box across here with the tie bar mm -hmm. to connect the two frame rails. That's together. under outside and underneath the uh, compartment. Yeah. Okay, that gets us real shocks that work real well um, and pretty much through the whole range. So we actually have shocks instead of uh, compressed vertebrae. All we need to do is put some packing foam in here and we'll have a shock. No, Carl, no, no. <laughs> It's got to say fox on it. Fox and why not king? Whoever's willing to give us the parts. Oh, there you go. Kill it. <laughs>